I'll give you a little overview about the event. I will tell you how we roll out. Four years ago, we started celebrating the opening of the school. My mother always said, if you see something that needs to be done, do it. I booked myself into Kellogg one uh, July. I left the hotel on July 4th, walked out on a day similar to this. It was gorgeous. And there were tourists on campus, but no one knew it was the birthday of this school. And I said, that should not be. Our reach, Tuskegee University's reach, is so vast, so far, that this day should be a huge celebration in this town. So here we are. Each year we grow. Last year it rained. We were under the awning at Kellogg. I'm very happy to say we are back here today. A hundred and what, 35 years ago, a man named Lewis Adams. Well, ain't this special? Look at you, Foster. Hi, baby. Lewis Adams and his wife, what was her name? Sally? Sally. Lewis Adams and his wife, Sally, started teaching trades to the emancipated slaves. And they were so overwhelmed by the task that Lewis wanted a school. A Mr. George Campbell of the community, a prominent man, went to Lewis Adams and said, Lewis, Mr. Foster here is running for state legislature and would like for you to deliver the black vote. And so Lewis did that, but with one condition, that he get a school out of it. And so we gather today, 133 years later, to celebrate that. But I want you specifically to understand that we are here to give praise to God. Because it was God who answered Lewis Adams' prayer. And it was not just $2,000. God kept blessing Lewis and sent Booker T. Washington, who we know built the school. Okay, so you can discuss from now until the cows come in who founded the school, but I would say God founded the school. These are hallowed grounds. We come to give praise that we have been blessed personally to be able to have this experience. All right, so this is, everyone has a program and it unfolds this way. The first thing is the presentation of the reef. This is a photo shoot, okay? That's why we're here to give praise and to uh, document the fact that we're doing it until President Johnson works with me to get the Tuskegee University Exposition going. That would be an Atlanta exposition on this campus to raise awareness of our programs. Booker once said two things he wanted from Tuskegee University. He wanted everything on this campus to be so right that anyone who visited or came in contact with the school would go home and write a check. And he said, everybody who works here, goes to school here, he wanted them to be prepared to go out and uplift others, okay? So we have a two-fold mission on this campus, that we present ourselves in such a way in every endeavor on this campus so that others will be impressed. Booker T. Washington was a man who built models, all right? So you can replicate anything Booker did because he did it in such a way that you would have evidence on, in writing. With that being said, I'd like to call the brothers. Oh, let me tell you what's gonna happen. I want the brothers of Omega Sci-Fi 
Fraternity Incorporated, Iota Omega Chapter, uh, James Arrington Basilis, raise your hand up. Now while I'm talking about James, I want you to know, James Arrington is my nephew. Well, how did that happen? <laughs> his my brother, Butch, married his mother for about a week uh, back in the day. So James is my nephew, if anybody has any doubt. It's everybody in the media clear on this. <laughs> you feel better? Thank you, Rob. <laughs> okay, that being said, the Omegas will come up and we'll take a photo of them presenting the wreath. I would like for the mayor and the president to get in one picture, and then I would like the Washingtons and the Adams family to be on either side for another picture. All right? Then we will proceed with the program, the remarks, etc. At the end of the program uh, and the singing of Tuskegee song, we will all get up. You see that uh, Mr. Dean from Facilities Management gave us risers this year. If you've been with us before, we now have risers. Uh, photographers, you have ladders. And I should have asked for these trees to be cut back, but you'll make it work. All right? So we follow the program. If I see where we need to give more instructions, I'll do so at that time. Woo! Oh, men of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Oh, I was a sweetheart. <laughs> oh, this is another Miss Omega right here. You know, we give our props to our people. All right. Let us put the wreath right in front of here. We want to thank whoever donated this. Because I stopped working the graves. So we want to stick it in the ground. You want photos of the assembling? You want the omegas to be around it? Around it, please. That's okay. it. Well, there's just three here. Okay. Right, we right. have others in spirit. Right. And and some are working, so for you in other places. All right, gentlemen. Okay. Right here at the plays. We'll do a couple of these. Here we go. One, two, three. Let's do a couple more. Baby, what happened to the cover of this one? One, two, three. <laughs> And he left out the song. Yeah, we show up the country, so Johnny gonna be singing for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be hot. All right, All right, man. All right, All right, Mr. President. Now that Mr. The, Mayor. Now that the cues. Well, yo. Whew. Now that the cues are finished and the real yeah. men. Oh. 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 Alpha, Alpha. 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 I don't think you've asked before. Oh, One, Chris two, three. <laughs> Lewis One Adams and Booker T. Washington family, start getting lined up, please. All right, very good. We got you. One more. Let me get my man pro tan. Where is it? Oh, oh yeah. I'm Johnny. You do? Okay, call up your people. Bring it's another man in here. Come on. Over there. <laughs> 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 Come on. Very good. <laughs> I was feeling a little on up here. I want you to give God the glory for this little breeze we have this morning. Come on. All right, we got you. Got us. Very good. Hold it. All right. All right. Do that. Okay, fine. That that's important. The Omegas will now speak. Good, uh, good morning. 
just wanted to share with you that uh, we are honored today to provide the wreath on behalf of Iota Omega chapter of the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, there is a connection between Booker T and Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Iota Omega is the ninth oldest chapter of Omega Psi Phi graduate chapters, but it's been in the city of Tuskegee since 1923. And uh, it is the oldest chapter in the state of Alabama. Booker T. Washington's son, Dave, was in Omega. Booker T. Washington's great-grandsons, Marshall and David Cavanis, are Omegas. And uh, their father was the bossalus of Omega when the chapter of Lambda Epsilon was started on Tuskegee's campus. Therefore, the Washington family and Omega Sci-Fi do jail together, and we would like to think if Booker T had been around a little longer, he would have been <laughs> this too. No. Thank you. Well, we do have many Kappas in the uh, Washington family. On that note, uh, we will begin the program, but before I do, let me introduce at this time the Booker T Washington family members who are with us. I am fourth generation. Um, Edith Charles, a graduate of Tuskegee University, please come forward. Fourth generation. Erica McDonald, fifth generation. Brian McDonald, the first Brian McDonald Hall, first of the sixth generation. His fiance Jasmine carrying the first of the seventh generation. We call her the baby critter. And now critter on up here. And last but not least, the princess. Sixth generation, Randy. Very gifted young lady. Aisha. Oh, I didn't. Golly. Aisha, fifth, sixth generation. Sarah, or fifth generation? Would she have been? Okay. Fifth generation, the daughter of Sarah. And we are the Washingtons. All right. All right. Uh, and she just graduated from Tuskegee. Okay, I say that because I know you all are just too tired of Robin, so I want you to know I'm not an only child. Okay, uh, Randy McDonald will do her reading, and each of you will come up as your name appears. Thank you, children. At the Lewis Adams grave, unless you want me to do that now, now, we would like to introduce the Lewis Adams family before we begin. Lewis Adams, somebody come and introduce your family. Okay. Robin. I would normally let, let Charles do that. He's the family historian, Charles, Charles Adams. Alfreda Wallace. Yeah, I'm Alfreda Wallace. I'm sorry. Give I'll, her a hand. Yeah, yeah. Alfreda. I'm not too up on I, on the generations because they're That's better. okay. <laughs> Lewis Adams had 16 children, so we have uh, Char Charles Charles Michael, for example, is like what third, fourth generation. Charles, Charles, is over here. Charles uh, Michael, he's like what fourth generation? Are you fourth? Yeah. Uh, and 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 um, Charles, you're third. Third, third well, he's third generation too. So, and then I'm fifth generation, all see, right. so we have all these, they have these different ones, but this is, let me get the, uh, Charles first. Charles Adams is a double Adams. He is the, he is the, um, grandson of Charles P. Adams, who was the founder of Grambling, and his grandmother <coughs> was a Martha, we called her Dolly Adams. Uh, was, who was uh, one of the younger children of Lewis Adams. Um, let's see here. Charles, P. A uh, Charles Michael Adams, Reverend Charles Michael Adams, is um, third generation. He's third generation. Virginia 
Peterson, Virginia Swan Peterson, you are fifth generation. Yeah, you're fifth, fifth generation. Where's uh, Tommy? Tommy, 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 Thomas Adams. He has a daughter who just finished Tuskegee. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Thomas is from Atlanta. He, yes, yeah. And he's uh, third generation too. Thomas Adams. Sharia Adams is Charles Michael's daughter. She is the fourth generation. The Michael Adams. The Michael is he is the fifth generation. Oh, oh that's no, no, no. Cheryl, 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 Adams. Cheryl, Cheryl Adams. I'm sorry, that's Michael's sister. She's third generation. And yeah. Renee Adams is the wife of Charles Michael. Right. Wow. Who else yeah, right. Virginia Adam Virginia Swan Peterson is um, fifth generation. Her daughter just finished uh, Tuskegee as an occupational therapist. Amen. My son, my son over there, Patrick, is a filmy, and he is sixth, sixth generation. And the other ones are on their way here. <laughs> All right, let's get a family portrait of the founding families of Tuskegee University. Y'all, can we get over that way so they can get up Okay, go on. No, I mean, All right, we'll go to you then. Oh, oh. No. Oh. 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 Hey, girl. 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 Hey, you got the, you got this running Patrick. Patrick. Yep. You got to run it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, that's that now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's, that's oh, great. That's, that's, oh, wow. That's oh, great. Oh, we can't see you. Come on. You need to come up. Mm -hmm. She needs to come up. She needs to come up. She Everybody look, can you see? Um, All right, everybody right here, please. Here we go. Hey, hold on. One, two, three. Did I get that side? Here we go. A couple more. One, two, three. Yeah. One more. Stay where you are, Mr. President. Okay. Mr. President, yes. Let's yeah. come take this picture while they're still alive. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 this is a yeah, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, meet the new first family. <coughs> Is this okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all are I'm a young man, but I may not be able to speak that out like this. Oh, young. Oh, crap. Everybody ready? Now it's getting up. That's the problem. Go. One, two, three. Uh-oh, I turned. <laughs> Sorry. You're fine. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, find you a hole. Very nice. Here we go. One, two, three. Do one more. One, two, three. Do one right. more. One more. <laughs> Come on, Mayor Ford. You got young knees. One, two, three. Right. Help him up. Good. Right. Good. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, I have one other. Uh, I I would love to recognize every one of you individually, but there's a, there's someone here who's special to me in that he grew up with my son in Park Forest, Illinois. He works for WSFA Television. Vince Hodges from Park Forest, Illinois. Uh, he we connected on Facebook recently. And he said, of course you know me. You gave me tickets to see Lionel at the Rosemont Horizon. <laughs> Going to see him again on Monday. Okay, Brandy. Booker T. Washington on the opening of I confess that what I saw during my month of travel and investigation left me with a very heavy heart. The work to be done in order to lift these people up seemed almost beyond accomplishing. I was only one person, and it seemed to me that the little effort which I could put forth could go such a short distance towards bringing about results. I wondered if I could accomplish anything, and if it were worthwhile for me to try. After consultation with the citizens of, T of Tuskegee, I set July 4, 1881 as the day for the opening of the school in the little shanty and church with ha which had been secured for its accommodation. When Booker T. Washington arrived in Tuskegee, Alabama in 1881 at the age of 26, 16 years after slavery, there was no land, no buildings, no students, and no teachers. There was a $2,000 appropriation for teacher salaries from the Alabama legislature. When he passed away in November 1915, 33 years later, he left an institution with an endowment of approximately $2 million, property worth over $1.5 million, an annual budget of nearly $300,000, teaching 36 trades and professions in 15 departments, with an enrollment of 1,537 regular students and 197 faculty members. To God be the glory. To Reverend William Lenard. Let us go to the Lord, to the throne of God uh, and prayer. And before we go, we are standing in the midst of uh, the original 100 acres of land that was purchased by Booker T. Washington. It's very fitting that the statue that, uh, uh, in memory of him, is sitting in the center that was done by Charles Keck in 1922. And, uh, and well, Washington was one of those whose favorite scripture was to acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways, and he shall direct thy path. You might say, Leonard, how do you know that? Because all of the students here at that time uh, were required to go to chapel. And the original chapel was right here, right here. It was burned in 19, right over here in 1957. Excuse me, right over here. That's right. All right. That's why all those graves are faced that way. Yeah. Okay. Well, all of them are faced that. We're glad you mentioned that. And I'm gonna give you this, and I'm gonna let you, and then we'll get started. All the graves are facing east and west, except two. Did you hear me? Carver and Washington. Carver and Washington. You find out and let one of the park rangers let me know why they are facing. Uh, north and south instead of east and west. All right. Most grades face east and west. Those are facing north and south. Let us go to the throne of grace. Gracious and merciful Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, we come this morning with praises on our lips and thanksgiving in our hearts, thanking thee for the many blessings that thou hast bestowed upon each of us from the conception of our birth to this present time. Father, we ask your blessings upon the Booker T. Washington family, our president, Brian Johnson, and his family, our mayor, commissioners, parents, teachers, faculty, staff, and students, and each and every one here today at this memorable occasion. The occasion recognizing your God-given innovations, leadership, dedication, and the work of your servant and our first president, co-founder and organizer of Tuskegee University, Booker Telefero Washington. As we come to remember his God-given contributions to this community and to the world. Keep us ever mindful of the words of our founding president who said, there is no security or defense for any of us except in the highest intelligence and development of all. And we shall prosper and proportionately learn to dignify labor and put brains and skills into the common occupation of life. And finally, he who renders service to his fellow man never makes a sacrifice. Now, Father, as this Tuskegee University wreath is laid by the brothers of Omega Sci-Fi, let us remember the life of Booker Telefero Washington, his deeds and contributions to mankind, and then allow us to let our light so shine before men that they might see our good work and glorify thee 
which, is, which art in heaven. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we ask it all. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Dr. Johnson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. I stand here today thanking each and every one of you for being here. And I thought a lot about what I might say, but when you stand before such an eminent person, an eminent founder, and a founding superintendent of an institution, uh, you're deeply humbled. And I can only begin to think about uh, Luke chapter 4 when they talk about, when they spoke about Jesus Christ. Uh, they said that he spoke with authority because he spoke with authority because he was a man of both words and deeds. He was not like the Pharisees, he was not like the Sadducees, because when they spoke, they only spoke of things that they heard of or things that they communicated about other individuals or what the scriptures had suggested to them. But when Christ spoke, he spoke because he was a man of both the words and the works that accompanied him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously when you think of Booker T. Washington, you think of the same sort of things. That we stand here today because of his works. We don't stand upon his words. And though he had many words, and many words I've fed on before even becoming the president of Tuskegee University, I'm most appreciative of looking around at 5,000 acres. I'm most appreciative of looking at the amount of wealth that he left and endowed this institution with. And I say all of these things to suggest that Booker T. Washington's legacy will not only live on because of what he said, but particularly what he did. And so my charge and what my promise and what I have spoken to the Board of Trustees, to our faculty, our staff, our students, when he passed away in 1915, he left this institution with 1,500 students. It has only doubled in 100 years next year. It's only doubled. We're looking forward to surpassing that mark exceedingly because we intend to be men of words and deeds, just like our founder. I do a lot of quoting, I do a lot of Facebooking, and I like to make sure that I quote good things. I did it before I came to Tuskegee. And when you have a man such as Booker T. Washington, you're able to read his mind, you're able to read his journals, you're able to read his writings. Ms. Banks is absolutely correct. You need only follow the path which he's laid. And I can assure you that though you follow me on Facebook, that's not where the real work is being done. There's a lot of work being done, deeds done, and at the appropriate time those things will be announced. I implore you, I encourage you, I ask each and every one of you to continue to learn of this man. I'm still learning of this man. I'm a W.B. Du Bois scholar. I wrote two books on W.B. Du Bois, but beyond that, I've read all the intersections between Du Bois and Washington, but I've begun the process of reading all of his writings. And I can assure you that this man here, who lays in front of our faces today, was a man who transcends all the ages. He transcends all the things and all the people that I've ever read about. And I'm looking forward to serving this institution, not trying to emulate Booker T. Washington, but simply trying to do what Booker T. Washington would have done in the 21st century. I thank you all for your being here today, and I thank you very much for the Washington families, the Adams family. I thank you for the contributions of your founding uh, parents, your, your fathers, your, the influence, your bloodline continuously flowing and living, which also indeed is a testament to the men that walked on these places. Thank you very kindly to each and every one of you. I look forward to serving Booker T. Washington and serving each and every one of you. First, let's give, let's give Robin another round of applause. And another round for her energy. I want to again uh, pay tribute to the Washington family. Just wave your hand where you are. Let's give them another yeah. round of applause. Uh, Butch uh, and I were classmates. Uh, we were Boy Scouts together. And um, he, he went on to become an eagle. Uh, but by the time I reached 14, I stopped being a Boy Scout and became a Girl Scout. I started scouting girls. I didn't finish. But to the Washington family, uh, we are so proud of all of you and we thank you so much for being here. And this is the beginning 
of a, an institution, a program that we're going to build upon. Now all of the members of the Lewis Adams family, just wave your hand, wherever you are, let's put our hands together, let's show them some love. Because uh, Lewis, Lewis Adams was not only a skill, uh, uh, he just did so many things, but he was a great political leader as well because he's the one that put the political uh, combination together to make all of this happen and really uh, brought together town and gown. Now you've talked about uh, Dr. Washington. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Uh, Carver Lennard, I want to thank you so much for your history. Um, he represents the fact that Booker T. Washington was a lay minister at the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, 1858, the oldest Missionary Baptist Church uh, in the state of Alabama, the third largest, third oldest church. So Booker T. Washington was grounded in biblical faith. Secondly, he was a great educator. I don't have to tell you about that. And Dr. Johnson, uh, you follow in that great tradition of great educators, and let's give him and his family a round of applause again. Welcome to our city. I did not have a chance to be there for the reception that the city hosted for you. I was in Washington at the time. But again, I want to welcome you, sir, you and your wonderful family. The other day I saw you on campus. I thought you were a student. I said, just give him, <laughs> uh, give him another hand for his youth and his vitality. And it's good to have a young, brilliant leader of Tuskegee University. So we are proud of you. Now. Booker T. Washington was also a great political leader. As a matter of fact, he was, he was the overseer of what is known as the Tuskegee machine. Uh, many of you may not realize it, but Booker T. Washington's influence was not only here at Tuskegee, but it was national and international. International because in 1900 he dispatched his first emissaries to the country of Togo to teach them to grow cotton. But let's just talk about him briefly as a politician. Booker T. Washington was in, he was the founder of a black settlement or a black town, Tuskegee Institute, Alabama. And as a matter of fact, we all need to turn out uh, next Tuesday, there's a hearing on whether or not we are going to close the post office. I don't want to see anything closed in Tuskegee, particularly something as historic as the Tuskegee Institute Post Office. So let's be there and let the United States Postal Service know that we want that post office to remain open. Booker T. Washington had the foresight to organize Tuskegee Institute, Alabama. It was never incorporated, but indeed it was a town. Those of us who grew up in this town, we remember when we had everything. We didn't have to depend on anyone, Carver. I mean, you know, the white folks bless their heart and we love <laughs> everyone because we're all God's children. Black or white is not an issue for us. We learn how to coexist. But we coexisted in Tuskegee with whites and everyone else because we were able to stand on our pride, our dignity, and our heritage, and our culture. So we were equal. We grew up knowing that we were equal to everyone else in this country. That's what Booker T. Washington and Lewis Adams instilled in us in this community. And so in 1881, he started the Greenwood community, the Tuskegee Institute town which is this surrounding area. His concept was to build the school and the community around it. Tuskegee Institute had its own post office, its own businesses, its own churches, its own homes and everything. But he didn't stop there. In 1887, he dispatched leaders to Edenville, Florida and established the first all black incorporated town in the United States of America 
Eatonville, Alabama. As a matter of fact, there are five of these towns. Oh, Florida. We Florida. 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 Eatonville. Well, I'm thinking about Alabama. But Florida. Eatonville, Florida. There are five of these towns. Tuskegee Institute, 1881. Eatonville, 1887. And also in 1887, Mayor uh, in, in, in Mount Bayou, Mississippi, the, the town was also established by uh, Isaiah Washington, uh, I believe it, Montgomery was his name, uh, in, 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 in Mount Bayou, Mississippi. And then he didn't stop there to the Adams family. He dispatched who? Charles Adams, was it? To start Gramlin University. And so the city of Gramlin uh, was impacted by Booker T. Washington. And then in 1899, Hobson City, Alabama, which is the oldest black incorporated town in the state of Alabama, here again, Booker T. Washington sent leaders to, to start their school there in Calhoun County. So we now have incorporated all of these five towns into an alliance. We call, we call it the Historic Black Towns and Settlements. And we have just applied for one grant to promote our heritage, the Booker T. Washington Heritage, and we've just completed another proposal to get Carver the VA Hospital, Mr. President, which is also a great uh, result of, the, of this university, the VA Hospital. It is our goal to get it also declared as a national park site. We have the Tuskegee Institute National Park site in 1977. We have the, the Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site. And we will not be satisfied until this VA hospital, which was, uh, which is a reality today because of Dr. Moton, the second principal of Tuskegee Institute. So let's give Tuskegee Institute and Booker T. Washington and the Adams family another round of applause. I wanted to, to ask my mayor pro tem to join me and also the former mayor of Franklin to join uh, me. Come on up quickly, gentlemen, because I want you all to know that Booker T. Washington and Lewis Adams were also political leaders. So I want these political leaders to also bring greetings today you from Franklin and from uh, our council and our city. Good morning to you and I have a dream. All right. I am very glad to see all of you here and I would like to say or give you an invitation to come to Butler's Chapel AME Zion Church tomorrow to hear Robin speak because Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I'm sorry, Sunday. I'm getting that's all right. Uh, we want you to come over there to see the place where Tuskegee Institute started. We only have a stone there to show where this great school started. I think we should have a marker to show where Lewis Adams lived and what he did for that community. I have some history that goes back beyond the Booker T coming here, but you look at the number of times that we tried and we failed. We didn't give up, we continued to try again. So that axiom that says, if you fail, Try and try again is for real when you think about Tuskegee Institute because it came from an humble beginning. And I invite you to come to Butler's Chapel on Sunday and we will again revive that old Tuskegee spirit. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Ford, President Johnson, and Washington, and Adams family, Robin, and all here. Thank you for coming this morning. It's a beautiful occasion. I was reminding the mayor that last year we were standing in the rain, going down, Robin, with the umbrellas, but we stood through it because it's a beautiful occasion. 
bring the community together, remind us that we work best when we work strongly together. Yes. The university and the community. People always find ways to divide us. Yeah. Our strength is in being together. Yes. As we seek to revitalize the Tuskegee community and work with the university, we're particularly excited about occasions such as these. And as Mayor Carson said, I had to lead a couple of tour groups uh, when someone got ill. And we made a special effort coming from the Tuskegee Airmen site to stop at Butler Chapel Church <laughs> at that stone. And they were so excited, everybody got off the bus and wanted to take a picture at the stone at the original site. Because it means something to people to see that you have small beginnings, mm -hmm. but you don't stop and you work and you grow and you keep going after those goals that you have until you achieve what we have here today. So I'm particularly excited to be here. I'm thankful for what we have. As Robin keeps reminding us, we're blessed. We're tremendously blessed. As the president said, we have these to do because we've been given the opportunity to share and to work on what was established here many, many years ago on this beautiful Independence Day and the founding of Tuskegee University. Thank you for being here, Mayor Ford. Thank you. Thank You're you. always on top of Mayor Carson. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay, for the power invested in us by the people of Tuskegee, we hereby proclaim, joining with the President of the United States, the Congress of the United States, the Governor and the Legislature of Alabama, we hereby proclaim this 4th of July as an official day in the city of Tuskegee, Alabama. Let the festivities begin! <laughs> Call up my cousin Edith, who will give remarks uh, from the family. But I also want to piggyback on what was said about Butler Chapel because I participated myself in the meetings of the movement that were there. I think I remember learning We Shall Overcome at Butler Chapel. And if you read the history of the civil rights movement, you will know that many of those meetings took place there. I also want to make one change. Uh, Reverend Adams has other um, responsibilities, duties this morning, so we're going to let him give remarks or whatever from here, but we will still process to the grave where we will follow that program. So at this time, it's Edith. Do we have board? Peblin didn't make it. Uh, any other elected officials that would like to say one word? Okay, you missed that. Um, <laughs> after Cousin Edith, we will have Reverend Charles Michael Adams. We will sing the Tuskegee song, led by anyone who can sing. The words are in your program. And then we will... Uh, That's the leader, right? Here. Line up. Right here. Very good. Thank you. We'll line up and get in the photo. I like because most of us are a little uh, too old to be climbing to the top realm. That if the children would get on the top and those who can navigate the other steps do so. All right. Excuse All right. me. President Johnson, Mrs. Johnson, okay. the Adams family and other honored guests, my family and the Tuskegee community. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of this awesome celebration of the founding of our country and the founding of Tuskegee Institute from which I graduated. As you know, at least one of my family members, Dr. Booker T. Washington, was here from the beginning. I am the granddaughter of Booker's youngest son, Ernest Davidson and Edith Merriweather Washington, and many of you knew her as Mrs. Sheehy. The daughter, I am the daughter of Louise Washington and James O'Neill. My daughter and her family are here, as well as other members of the family. And uh, I want to mention again, Aisha, who is a 2014 graduate of Tuskegee University. It gives me great pride to think of how far Tuskegee Normal has come since its very humble beginnings. Without a doubt, Dr. Washington's accomplishments were well worth the effort. In addition, there have been board of trustee members and presidents who have helped the university become what it is today, 
and I say thank you to them for their efforts. Dr. Washington said, I have learned that success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which one has overcome while trying to succeed. By either measure, measure the position that Tuskegee has reached and the obstacles that it has overcome, Tuskegee is a success. President Johnson, you have the responsibility of continuing the successful growth of Tuskegee University. You have a very solid foundation and many examples that you can call on to continue the success that Tuskegee University is today. And of course, we, the family of Dr. Booker T. Washington, will be here to help and encourage you. Michael. Oh, Michael. I just wanted to make an announcement. How many of y'all are going to follow us out to the gravesite of Lewis Adams? Can we get a show of hands? Okay, good. Because uh, we can do those things out there, but I know some of y'all had to leave, and I want to make sure that uh, the, the, the bulk was going to still be here so they could understand, they could hear the reading of, on the Lewis Adams side of the house so that everybody uh, could be aware of those things. So if we're going to, uh, where, where are we going to line up, Robin? Oh, that's why I came back up. Yeah. The Tuskegee, city of Tuskegee police car is our lead car. I would like for the mayor to be behind the lead car. I would like the first family to be behind the mayor's cars. And because you are parked everywhere, I doubt if I can get all the families in the next cars. So just line up, uh, starting with the, what did I say, the mayor, the president. And then after those three cars, everyone else line up. It's really an awesome experience to be in the procession going through town knowing what you're doing, that you are praising God and saying happy birthday, Tuskegee. May I have the song, please? <laughs> Robin, Robin. Yes. Robin, let me introduce please do that. the people who have just come, come in late of the Adams family. Uh, my hey, daughter, hey, hey. <laughs> my daughter Sarah Wallace Underwood is sixth generation. Sarah, uh, Sabrina Utsi is, I think she's fifth generation. Uh, Sabrina and my grandson, come on Zach. You just celebrated a birthday. <laughs> yeah, my grandson, Zachary is uh, seventh generation. And Blake is here too. Oh, Blake is here. I didn't know Blake was here. This is like, he is the seventh generation. This is Blake Underwood. Oh, I didn't see you, Blake. Okay, we got everybody now? Okay. All right. All right. First verse. Tuskegee, the pride of the swift road. Please gather and sing. We pay your homage today. today. For the words of thy teaching, the joy of thy care, and the good we have known beneath thy sway. O long striving mothers of diligent sons and daughters whose strength is at pride, we will love. <laughs> I've been given a correction. They uh, it suggested that the children can be in front because basically they can sit. So let us begin to assemble on the rising. Okay, that's it's dirty. <laughs> Uh, are, are you waiting for July 4th, 2015? I need you to come in the photo shoot. That's what we're doing here. Everybody. Oh, everyone. Everybody. No, everybody. 
Person behind Ivinson, I can't see you all. I want to thank Mr. Dean again for providing us. Yeah, I'm coming. Hard being this. Anything else I forgot? If not, we will begin to line up. I have a speaking engagement uh, now, so I'm going to leave, but you're in great hands. Line them up. Line them up. 